hi everyone i welcome all of you to today's session uh, is my screen visible to everyone just let me know perfect so in today's session yes, let's quick quickly start with a very brief recap what we did and what we are going to do uh, further first what we did in the last session was the six stages of software development life cycle so we would be doing uh, the, a quick recap for all the stages very first stage was your request for proposal so what is request for proposal that is your idea generation phase where the idea comes in then comes your requirement analysis where you do like ample amount of research you collect information as much as possible to lay out the project plan to make sure that everything is covered like what all customer audience you're targeting which platform you're choosing and everything every sort of questionnaire happens in requirement analysis then comes your uh, design phase design phase includes three phases your sketching your wire framing and your prototyping after that coding phase this comprises of your front end and back end part then comes your testing phase this is your quality assurance phase which involves all the all the uh, different types of tests for, for instance manual tests automatic tests unit tests integration tests and if your application passes 90% of the tests then it is considered as a fit application then it's your deployment phase this is where you release your application into the market you provide it to bunch of users you provide it to potential customers after getting their feedback you release it into the market you release it on app store or on uh, ios uh, application store or 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 on uh, as web apps as well once you've released it then comes your maintenance phase wherein you keep on fixing bugs you keep on adding more functionality you keep on providing support that is after sale support and that's how the entire software gets developed through different stages and every stage has a very uh, defined set of parameters and procedures that we need to follow and all the timeline happens from the project kick off till the project closure Pro project closure happens when your client has received the project and maintenance has started after the project has been delivered to the end user so a very brief overview different stages idea generation then uh, ample amount of research then uh, design phase sketching wireframing prototypes then actual coding happens where we as developers step in front end back end then quality assurance deployment phase and then your maintenance phase so any doubts in this before moving ahead if you have any doubts uh, post those doubts in the chat or simply say no doubts i'll move ahead okay so let's move ahead to the next topic the next topic is setting up our code editor we have finally reached uh, at that stage wherein we would start developing our environment our coding environment today so now before we can start writing a single line of code we first need to install a special tool this special tool is called the code editor what is a code editor a code editor essentially is a kind of software that allows us to write programming languages like html css javascript in a very easy way and since this bootcamp is probably your first contact with any coding language today i will guide you through installing one of the very best code editors in the world we would learn how to set up our code editor with some special settings like color themes extensions the code editor that we are going to use in this boot camp is visual studio code this code editor was uh, designed by microsoft so let's uh, let's set up our de development development environment the first step is open the chrome browser and once you open the chrome browser just enter the website code.visualstudio.com so i'll just show you how i'll just open that website for you right away yeah so, so let's do it together so uh, we will move along yeah 
So open the browser, enter this website. So if you, I'll just copy paste this and or show you open the browser, enter this website. When you hit enter, this would be the, uh, the, the website that would be opening. Uh, can, you, can, you, can, can you copy yeah. and paste the, uh, the URL yeah. in the chat? Definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. So I have uh, messaged the URL in the chat. You can uh, simply click on that link and open this particular website. This is the official website. If someone is not able to open the website through chat, just write VS code. And most probably the first option that comes is the official website. So you'll just click on this one and you would be redirected to this particular page. So this is our first step. And uh, once we have opened the uh, official page, VS Code, uh, VS, I, I'll just tell you VS Code has many features. It is free. It is compatible for all the platforms. So your Mac operating system, Windows or Linux, or for any other operating system that your PC is running on, VS Code is made for that. So once you have opened this uh, web page, all you need to do is select the particular operating system from here. They have provided three versions, Mac operating system, Windows and Linux. Whatever operating system is running on your system, you have to select the stable version of it. Just choose uh, the correct yeah, option. Let's, yeah. uh, Rahul, Rahul uh, let's move along. Uh, please confirm if you all were able to uh, open Perfect. the Visual Studio Code uh, page. If anyone was not able, please uh, say I wasn't. So we help them because uh, we, we want the setup to be done uh, itself today. No, no, don't download yet. Uh, just wait, let's uh, move along. Okay, yeah. So, so uh, I am anyone having yeah. problem? Yeah. No problem, right? Okay, so everyone was able to open, uh, click on the URL and open this uh, code.visualstudio.com. And then the next step will be, as Rahul said, like let's uh, click here and say, you know, download for Windows stable built or whatever here, click here, and then choose which system you have, the operating system, right? Rahul, let's, let's right. uh, move ahead That's slowly right. at this, uh, uh, with this, you know, pace, so we will all be able to uh, download it and set it up. Sure, definitely. Yeah, so, do confirm, uh, do mm -hmm. confirm if you were able to select uh, uh, your version, right, of the OS that you are using. All good. Anyone has any problem? No? Okay, then. So when you, you'll select this, it will start downloading. It would take you to this page and you can see the VS Code setup is downloading at the bottom left. It has been downloaded on my system. So, uh, are you have you uh, all of you are able to download this particular file in your system? Do you see this kind of download at the bottom left? Anyone having trouble? No one. So, I mean, everyone was able to download it as per their operating system, right? If anyone has any problem, uh, please uh, ping in the chat. No problem, right? All good. Let's move now to the next step. Perfect. So go to this downloaded file and just uh, click it so that the file starts running on your computer. So you just uh, click on this one and uh, click show in folder or you can always say always open files of this type or open directly. So when you'll click this, it will start running on your computer. Just, just see if you're able to run this file. I'll just uh, pull up that screen that shows uh, the file is running. Allow me just one moment. 
So you would get a pop-up like this. When you'll click open file, I'll show you once again. So let's say I'll just click on open and you will get a pop-up like this. A pop-up would appear, which would ask for the, if you accept the agreement or not, do you, do you see this pop-up, this information screen? Anyone facing any issues, any confusion, do let me know. No confusion, right? Perfect. So the next step is select, I accept the agreement. So Safi is facing some issues. What, what issue are you facing Safi? Is it, what are you not able to find? Uh, Safi, if you are facing any issue, share your screen. Don't, don't worry. We, uh, today is, is dedicated for, set, for setting up. So uh, uh, Rahul can stop sharing and you can share your screen. Okay, Safi, sure. you can even speak, Safi. Don't worry. Speak up if you want. Uh, Sophie, you already uh, downloaded it, right? It says, thanks for downloading. If you are not seeing it here, then, you know, just go to downloads in your computer. Uh, or, uh, you yeah. Yeah. Or you can, you know, the point is you only shared uh, the specific window. Uh, or if Safi, you... what you can do, what you can do is uh, go to the top right corner. You can see three dots over there. You can see downloads over there. No, no. No, 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 no. On the right, on the right. VS code, do you want to keep to keep it anyway? See, there is exactly, keep and delete. Exactly. Yeah, keep and delete. This, uh, you see, on the right, on the right, Sophie, on the right, top and on the right. Yeah, here, keep. Good. Yeah, so don't worry. Today's, you know, we, we, we just want to make sure that we are all set up properly and we don't have any problem with the tool because if we don't have the proper tool set up, we won't be able to code. Yeah, click on open. So uh, we have um, Ilham Haji who recently joined us. So uh, Ilham, um, uh, uh, Rahul, can you uh, uh, text the uh, the URL again on the on the chat so uh, Ilham will will uh, get access to the uh, VS Code page? Sure, definitely. Allow me just one yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Safi, meanwhile, you can, okay. Yeah, I've, I've shared the link. Okay, good. Uh, Safi, are, are we good from there on? Did you click?
Safi do confirm. Yes, I, I, it, now it's okay with me. I'm on okay. The perfect, perfect. Uh, Ilham, yeah, yeah, do download it as per your as per your system, Ilham. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's move from uh, now. Yeah, don't don't worry, Khan. We were, we we just want to make sure that everything is going properly and smoothly. So I'll share my screen. Yeah. So from here, just open the file that you've downloaded and a pop up would appear. I'll just show you the pop up once again. This pop up would appear. And here you have to select, I accept the agreement. So everyone select the first option from the, these two options, the options at the bottom, I accept the agreement. Once everyone selects this one, give me a yes in chat. All good. Then click on the next button. Here it is asking you for certain options. Do you want to create a desktop icon? So I would say click yes, because it would be easy to access your VS code uh, software. You have a, you would have a desktop icon with this logo, this blue logo at your desktop. If you select this particular one, this particular checkbox, if you select, then it would create a desktop icon, select this one. So if you have Mac, it would uh, go to your, uh, that uh, there's a tray, I guess, uh, for all the applications on Mac. Let me check, I, I have that one as well. I'll just, So uh, would you be able to share your screen? Just share your screen. I'll help you with those uh, steps on Mac. So Ahmed or Elham, please share your screen. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, can you see my screen? Um, not as of now, Elham. Uh, let me check. There you go. Now I think it's yeah, fine. it's work. Okay, so I got this window here. So you already moved ahead. Right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. You've already downloaded the VS Code. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So like. What I have to do now next? So okay. now just wait, we would be coming to this screen once we have downloaded for the Windows operating system. So just wait, you have downloaded the software correctly. We would be coming to this screen very shortly. Okay. Uh, Ilham, your voice is, uh, you know, breaking, so. Uh, I'm Ahmad, so I don't have a difference, Marcus. Do you want me to share my screen with you? Yeah, if, if it's the same, yeah, then, then uh, yeah, do share. Yeah, Elham, uh, you can stop sharing. Wait, I'll share my screen too. Yeah, Ahmad, yeah, all good. I see this one. I see this mouse. Do you see my mouse? 
uh, uh, Ahmad, you can share your uh, uh, complete window. If you are sharing only one particular one, window. One, like, uh -huh, if it was this one, like when I, when I collect it. So we I can't it. see it's a, it's a white uh, screen only. Oh, wait, 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 then wait, I will share again so I know why it's like. Yeah, stop and reshare. Uh -huh. So I received this one, and after that, and I when I click, I received this one. Do you see all that? You have uh, Mac, right? Yeah. You have Mac or you have Windows? Uh, it's Windows. It's Windows 11. Okay. Okay, Windows, then that's fine. And so yeah, you are good. Well, install a virtual coding. It's a different folder if you want a different folder for this. So, uh, you know. Your but, voice you know, is uh, coming a little bit barely, you know. Uh, can If you can do something with your voice. Ahmed, uh, you can, uh, are you able to locate the software th uh, that you have downloaded? Are you able to locate that file which you have downloaded? If not, just go to the top right corner. There are three dots you can see next to the paused. Uh, yeah, the top right corner, there are three vertical dots over there. Beside Extreme your right. picture. Beside exactly. your picture. Yeah, yeah, right here. Over here, just click. click. And you can see downloads. Click on downloads. Uh, yeah. You just click this one, the first one. Yes. Click on this one. Did or, you click? Or, yeah. Or, or you can do a right click and select open. Just do a right click and select open. It's again download. Okay, let's see. Now show in folder, just just uh, click uh, for, for the lower one, yes. For the lower one, click show in folder. Or even at the bottom, you can see you, your software has been downloaded. At the bottom left. Yeah, this is very important that we should make sure that everyone has the, uh, the, the VS. Uh, it's stuck for us, uh, Ahmed. Uh, Ahmed, one thing you can do is go to your PC, your computer, my computer, and there select the downloads folder. There you can find this particular software directly. Or at the bottom left, you, uh, you can see VS Code setup. From there also, you can select show in folder or open directly. Just at the extreme bottom left, you can see, uh, I can see VS code has been downloaded. Just extreme bottom left corner. You see VS code on the right bottom, left bottom or bottom left. Ahmad, can you hear us? Okay. He is not able to hear us. <laughs> yeah, Tarafa Chap point. Amijak Sadaita mute or unmute committee me the enemy saw. Um, 
Ahmad, if you cannot hear us, then we will stop uh, your sharing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move ahead, Rahul. Uh, okay. Ahmad, yeah, Ra uh, Ahmad, sorry? were you able to were you able to uh, reach the point or not? Uh, Oh, in a major open 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 next next I can do it. I'm the host. Yeah, go ahead. Now you can share your screen. Uh -huh. Okay. So yeah. now all you have to do is select this create desktop icon and click next. Now your VS code setup is ready and you have to click install. When you click install, the software would be installed on your system. I already have this installed. But still, I will, if I click this one, see the software is getting installed on my computer. All the files are getting installed. So click desktop icon, click next, and then you would get the install option. You have to click install. And once you click install, see if you reach this particular pop-up, which says the Visual Studio Code setup wizard has been completely installed. All good. Please confirm. All good. So we accept the agreement. We then we go to create desktop icon and select next. Everyone able to do that? Once you do it, you would reach the install pop up window. Everyone clicked on install option available. Anyone facing any issues? Okay, no issues. Okay. Next, Perfect. you have to select this launch Visual Studio Code and click Finish. Once you click Finish, your Visual Studio Code would, would automatically open. So I'll show you that one. So if I click this Finish, automatically a VS Code window would open in my, uh, in my computer. So I'll show you how it looks. Okay. Yeah. A normal Visual Studio Code at the very beginning would look like this. This would open on your screen. You might get some release note uh, file over here along with get started. So that's fine. That's uh, That's just telling what all updates have happened in the VS code for November 2022 version and so on. So are we able to see this screen, this particular Visual Studio interface on our screens? Perfect. Anyone facing any issues?
Uh, I only see confirmation from a couple of our participants. Please do all confirm with yes or no. You don't have any problem, say no issue. Let's proceed. Because if any one of you think that you will do it later on, or you will watch a, a YouTube video in order to set it up, uh, it will be a little bit hard and difficult for you to catch up, uh, even if you watch the recording again and again. So let's spend time here and make it happen. No one has any issue, right? Uh, uh, I, I see that Ahmed is uh, Ahmed has is having a different window, and uh, Sayer is also not able to see it on Mac. If both of them can share their screens one by one, I can help them out. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes we can. I have a Mac. It is a different window. Uh, there are uh, five options. And the first one is the first one. The first one says choose the look you want. So it is the dim. And uh, the next four options are sync to and uh, from other device. One shortcut to access everything. Uh, Do one thing, share your screen so we, we know it Okay. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can. Okay. There are these five options which one i should select so i am a, this is just a starting screen this is just get started this might be different for uh, mac than nothing to worry this is just telling you if you want a dark theme if you want a light theme so i would suggest go for the dark theme the one that you have already selected that's good and uh, other other uh, kind of options you need not select right now you can simply close the file also from the top you can see the get started and you can close this file. This is just an introductory file. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. You're, you've uh, correctly downloaded the software, nothing to worry. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, Sayer was also facing some issues. Sayer, uh, not able to see it in Mac. I... If and Mac, it appears the same, I think on every Mac, it is the same window. So everyone able to follow along, everyone able to download the uh, the software, right? Perfect. Okay. So I'll quickly share my screen and we'll move ahead. So now that we have uh, downloaded the software correctly, it's time to install certain extensions. What is an extension? An extension for VS Code is basically small piece of functionality that we can download and make the editor, code editor, more easier to work with and more functional. So with the help of extensions, we can customize the editor to our needs. So like you have extensions for your Google Chrome, which enhances the functionality. Similarly, we have extensions for code editor as well. Let's download most important ones that we would be needing in this bootcamp. In order to uh, get the extensions for your VS code, this is the icon. Uh, do you see this extensions being uh, coming up? You click on this one. And you can see a search bar and all the installed extensions in my VS code. So if I'll just uh, close this one, you can see this particular search bar. So everyone, please open this extensions panel by clicking on this icon. If you've opened it, do let me know. Yes, we did. Perfect. Now the first extension that we are going to install is called prettier. In this particular search bar, just type prettier. And this particular, this particular icon would pop up and click this one, the first one. And a file would open, which would detail the extension prettier and its details. So do let me know if everyone is able to open this prettier 
extension from this panel and able to see this file yeah as as you guys uh, see there are many uh, prettier right so make sure that we are uh, installing the right extension so uh, in order to check you can see how popular this particular extension is this is used by more than 27 million people more than 27 million developers are using this code for matter so do download only this one which has these many uh, number of downloads on your system you can you can check so how to do it i'll just uh, uninstall it as of now now you would see these particular uh, options click on install once you install there uh, there might be an option of enable or disable if you're getting an option of enable click on enable like this enable and uh, your prettier is set this extension is enabled globally you would get this option so which version are you getting there are many prettier versions available over here but just check that you're downloading the one which has been downloaded by the huge number of developers this one which is developed by uh, I mu there must be a name of the developer over here as well i think yeah, uh, uh, um, the version is also version 9.10.3. Exactly. Yeah, this one, the easiest this version. Yeah. Right. All good, right? Anyone has any problem with that? Mine one is the same, but like I saw the publish. Uh, yours one is 111 2017. Mine, mine one is 110. 2017 so is that okay like so this one share your screen yes. is it fine rahul so uh, if like, if the number of downloads and version is same then it's fine then it's oh, perfectly the fine download is like a 27401 your one is 27391 so uh, there might be uh, you're using mac right yeah yeah so number of mac users maybe more who are uh, using this extension as of now Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Mine is the same number, 27401. Okay. Yeah, so this is for Perfect. Mac. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else facing any issue? So you might need to reload your VS Code window. It might ask you to reload. There must be, a, if you're getting an option reload required, then you might need to close the VS Code and reopen it if, if it is showing reload required. Mine is just showing disable and uninstall, so it's I'm good to go, right? Perfect, and it shows that extension is enabled globally, right? And the extension is enabled globally. Perfect. Okay, good. The next extension. Anyone has having any problem so far? No problem, so, right? Very shortly, we would be seeing how these extensions are working and how they are making us uh, write code easily. So a few benefits of Prettier are, this is a code formatter. It automatically formats your code whenever you save your file. So it's very important that your code should look exactly the same way every time you're adding more lines of code to it. That makes your code more readable and helps in avoiding errors also. Now, what we are going to do is before we download other extension, we are going to set Prettier as our default formatter. Because right now in our VS Code settings, the default form formatter is the formatter which is pre-installed with, uh, with the VS Code software. But we have downloaded another extension, another code formatter, and we are going to set this one as the default formatter. So how to do it? Close your extensions tab go to the settings icon just at the bottom left extreme bottom you can see the settings icon click on this one and go to the settings option so everyone on the settings page do let me know yes anyone facing any issues no 
Okay. So let's move ahead in your settings page on your settings page in the settings bar in the search bar, just write uh, the default formatter. So how to do it? Just write default formatter. And you can see over here, the default formatter editor default formatter. I have already selected prettier, but if you, this one is not selected on your system, just select out of the available options that you can find prettier over here. From the drop down menu, select prettier. Write default format or formatter automatically it would give and then select prettier in the default formatter option. Done guys, any problem? Perfect. Okay. So now the question comes, when should the prettier should come into action? When should prettier format your file? So what I want is whenever we save our file, either it's HTML file, CSS file, the formatter should format our code. So in this particular same search bar, write format on save. So what you can write is format on save. And over here, select this option, this checkbox format on save. Just select this one. Yes, Elham. Uh, sorry, I just missed the uh, before when, when we went to the default form. So after which uh, section I have to select. Okay, I'll just go to that one default formatter. Default for so over here you can get the editor, the editor option. Uh -huh. which says default formatter and it has a drop down menu uh -huh. from that menu. You have to select the prettier, the one okay. that we just installed prettier code formatter. This one select uh -huh. this. Yeah, I got it. Uh -huh. Perfect. Oh. Now clear the search bar uh -huh. again, type format on save. Format on save. Uh -huh. And this editor option only select this box, this checkbox, which says format a file on save. Uh -huh. And it says a formatter must be available for that. We've already installed prettier. Yeah, I did. Perfect. Uh -huh. So anyone facing any issues till okay. here before we move on to the next setting. Now the next setting is very important, which is auto save setting. Now, in the same search bar, just write auto save. Now, this auto save will automatically save your files as you go to another tab or you leave the window completely. Suppose you, uh, for instance, by mistake, close your editor and your files were not saved. So this auto save would, would automatically save your file. And in this drop down menu, select on focus change. Under auto save, select on focus change. With this, you will never lose your edits. You will not have to manually save your files all the time. All good. Good. Perfect. I mean, I see only Ilham, Sierra, um, and uh, Zaki, um, you know, confirming. Please uh, make sure that we are all set up by today. Right? Perfect, okay. Mustafa. So Thank another you. one. Uh, moving ahead, another one that I like to use to uh, in my VS code is changing the tab size. So tab size is just for the indentation of code. Indentation basically means how far your code would go when you hit tab. Normally tab size in VS code comes 
set to four. However, in HTML and CSS, we prefer tab size to two for better readability of code. So in this particular uh, section only, right? Tab size. And here, if it is four, just edit it and uh, write two. If your system is showing four, just uh, write two instead of four. the next extension is a very important extension that is called live server. Just go to this extensions panel, remove the previous uh, searched item, write live server. And this particular live server by Ritwik Day. Just see by Ritwik Day, open this one. Very popular extension you can see more than 29 million people have been using it so far highly rated just follow the same process install it and enable it i've already done it for my system just follow the same process install and then enable and if you see that extension has been enabled globally just give me a yes that all good in chat I didn't have this, so I also I'm also installing it. It's a little bit slow. So this extension, why is it so important? It creates a local server at your computer. It provides a live reload feature for your web page. For instance, if you are making some changes on your code files, you need not go to web page to reload it and see the changes. Automatically, those changes would appear on your web page. So this live server does that for us. We are making changes on code and at real time, we can see the changes on web page as well. So we need not reload our web browser every time we make some changes with the help of live server. Once we download these uh, extensions, we would see how they're actually helping by just, uh, I would just write some simple HTML CSS code uh, and I'll show you how things, uh, how extensions are helping us. Perfect. Should we move ahead? So the next, the next extension that I want you to download is auto rename tag. Auto rename tag. This one, this auto rename tag, it uh, whenever we are changing the tag names in HTML file, the auto rename tag changes that uh, for both opening and closing tag. We do not do it separately for co closing tag. If you are making changes in the opening tag, then it would change for the closing tag. Right now, opening tag and closing tag would not make any sense because we've not started any HTML code, but just download it. I'll show you an example uh, quickly. Okay. The next one is color highlight. This comes very handy when we are uh, working with CSS. So this color highlight highlights particular set of colors, the colors that we would be using in CSS that helps us highlight those colors. So just for this is very CSS specific and some people use it, some don't. So 
sometimes it comes very handy. Just ke keep it installed on your system. Okay. So now one, uh, one uh, apart from these extensions and settings, you can also change color and icon theme for your VS code. For instance, right now I'm using the default color theme, default icon theme. You have multiple options to choose from over here. You can see color theme, go to second settings and then select color theme. And here multiple colors would open and you can select anyone and the color of your VS code would change. So the one you like, you can keep that one, but the one I am using is the default one. The dark plus default is the default provided by the VS code. So you can select color theme as per your choice also. And if you want some other theme, you can download it from extensions panel also. If you can write just theme, multiple themes would come up like GitHub theme, material icon theme, Atom one dark pro. You can explore these themes and you can check which one you like. You want some other uh, theme for your uh, system. For instance, if I choose GitHub theme and if I set this color theme, just see the color would change. The color is changing for my VS code as per the theme I'm selecting. So you can just go through these themes and you can choose for yourself. So I'll just go back to my original color theme. Okay. Is it? Yeah. So this is the default one I'm using. You can select any of the color themes available. Also, you can download them. Similarly, you can select your icon themes also. There are uh, many icon themes available. These icon themes uh, are reflected over here. When you would have multiple files, we would come to this part, then icon themes come into play. So the one I have installed and the one I am using is this material icon theme. Very nice theme. You can use this one and has very beautiful uh, logo type of, uh, you have icons for each file. So you can download material icon theme. From your extensions, just go to material icon theme, this one, this material icon theme, you can install it and set the file icon theme as material icon theme. So this is the one I'm using. And uh, if you think uh, you want to explore other icon themes, there are multiple icon themes also. So this is just the aesthetics part. So any, any uh, problems so far, everything good? Should we move ahead? Perfect. The next tool that we would need is Google Chrome web browser. I believe everyone has already downloaded the Chrome web browser. Make sure you have Google Chrome installed on your computer because we would be using developer tools under the Google Chrome. So we all have Google Chrome pre-installed, right? We have already uh, installed or we have been using that, right? Okay. Yeah, for Thanks. Mac users, uh, there might be an issue. So let's let's do it. Okay, so I'll just uh, do, has excuse yeah. me. Uh, what was the material icon theme? Uh, the, the use of material icon theme you're asking? Yeah, like, yeah, like okay. what? Let me show you a file, then I would be able to explain. I have a demo code written as of now. So you can see these files over here index, uh -huh. HTML, and CSS. Uh -huh. The icons over here. These are provided by the material icon theme. Oh, so okay, like if I choose, if I choose some other one, you can see the icons being changed. Oh. Minimum, minimal visual studio code and other icons. So these file icons just focus over here. This one. Oh, okay. 
So material icon themes provides this logo kind of icons for two our files. Oh, okay. Got Okay. So should we go ahead and uh, help uh, with Google Chrome installation? Anyone who does not have Google Chrome installed, just put it in chat. I'll show you the steps. So just go to any browser, type in download Google Chrome. It would get you to this site, the Google Chrome site. And just follow the steps, download Google Chrome and so on. Anyone who has, does not have the Google Chrome, I would proceed ahead with the steps. So should we skip this part? downloading Chrome. Okay. Uh, let's see how the extensions are working for us. So I've just written some demo code for us right now. Very simple code, HTML, CSS. Do not worry what each particular item means, which what each particular word means. This is just to show you how extensions are working. We would be understanding each line of these uh, lines of code when we would be working uh, towards HTML. So right now, let's see how extensions are working. The extensions that we installed, how are they helping us? The first one is the prettier. What prettier does is suppose I uh, put empty space over here. And now if I hit save, if I control S my file, automatically Prettier will format my code. Suppose I have uh, written this code over here. If I hit save, automatically Prettier will format my code. So if I written some paragraph like this, and if I provided some space over here like this, now it would be very difficult to uh, read code like this because the code is just 28 lines of code. Later on, we would be writing hundreds and hundreds of lines of code as well. But what Prettier does is if I save my file, automatically it brings the back uh, my, uh, this particular, uh, it, it formats the code for me automatically. So like if I put any spaces, if I hit save, automatically it comes back. So everyone do try if your prettier is working for you. Just try to enter few spaces. Make sure you do not put space over here because this would create an error. This is syntax error. This prettier would not bring back. This is a syntax error. If you're putting any spaces, make sure you're putting spaces either after this closing bracket or uh, between the texts, this particular white colored texts. So I've put some spaces. If I hit save, it would come back. Do not put any spaces over here because this would, this is a syntax error. This is something uh, the HTML is producing error. We are not writing the, as per the rules described by HTML. So is it clear? Should I move ahead with the next extension? Okay, this page particular, uh, I, I'll show you. So uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot that you're not having this code right now. What we can do is the first thing is whenever you are having this uh, new VS code with you, just open this one, just close this one. This is the, this is the page, right? This is the main uh, interface. Now go over here, this one. Click open folder and if uh, suppose you make some folder on your desktop, click open folder, it would take you to the pop up window and select that particular folder. So like if you click over here, it would go to the pop up window and it would select the particular folder. So 
once you you're done with it, you select the particular folder, you would see the folder name over here. This is the folder name. So what I would suggest, like uh, I've made this folder, I'll make another folder over here. This is my desktop. I'll just bring the folder over here. I'll rename this one. Let's say this is basics. I'm writing basics. Now, if you if you have not opened your file, you can also open VS Code from here. Right click on the folder and open with code. It would open the basics folder in your VS Code. Yeah, I mean, uh, we are not yet at, uh, you know, initiating the, uh, the project or any code at this point. When we uh, get started, then we will uh, need to have folders in place. So that we will do. Okay. So this I is how you get to a folder. So the babe, the one thing that you can do is just click on this file and you can create your file. For instance, I write index.html. So index.html. So this is how files are created. So we would be studying all of this when we would be moving to the uh, core uh, coding part. So right now what I wanted to show is how the extensions are working. So let's, uh, let's see how extensions are working for us over here. So we saw that uh, how Prettier is working. Just okay. So the next ex extension that we downloaded was the live server. So how to access live server? Either you can click this go live at the bottom right corner. You can see go live to click on live server, or you can right click on the file and you can select open live server. The open live server will open the web page for you. I'll quickly split these screens. So I'll just close these tabs. So this open live server. So everyone is able to uh, view this, right? Open live server has created a fake bra a fake server. This is the server address. 127.0.0.1 is your local server. And this is the port where the server is listening to the request. This is the file name index.html that is running through which the code is coming. So what live server does is suppose I make some changes over here. For instance, uh, let me see. I've written over here. Let's say I'll just uh, make some changes. All right. Change title. And if I hit save, automatically it changed. If I had not installed live server, I would have to come over here and reload my page every time. So if I, uh, if I make some other changes, change, let's say second time. And if I hit save, automatically my page is getting updated. So this is because of live server. So everyone is able to see screen. Is it visible? So everyone able to see both the screens, right? My VS code and my browser as well. Uh, yes, uh, we can. <clears throat> it's a little bit confusing at the moment for uh, our participants, right? Because... So don't worry, just I wanted to show us that the extensions are working for us. You would understand them as we go along with the course. We would understand by writing each line of it. We would understand everything of it in detail. Just I wanted to show you that the things that we have downloaded, how they are working and the auto rename tag. So supposedly if we are changing this one, so this H1 is here, H1 is here. But if we are changing this one, if I write H2 automatically it gets changed over here. 
So that is auto rename. So this is how it is working. So these were the extensions part. So we would be coming to this when we would be touching HTML in detail. Okay, let's move ahead. Now that we have installed and set up required tools for this course, let's move on to the final section of our prep course that is full stack web development. We all know the year is about to end and you would want to know what is important, what you should learn in 2023 and beyond to become a full stack web developer. Well, from this section onwards, the entire course structure is completely focused on making you a skilled full stack developer from zero to 100% ready as per industry standards. The entire curriculum is filled with lots of additional resources, references, documentations, examples, projects, and assignments. So it's time to see what actually we are going to do. Let's understand full stack in, in JavaScript, what exactly full stack in JavaScript means. I'll quickly share a few images for easy understanding. Okay, allow me just one moment. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, Rahul. Um, uh, yes. Uh, since so, uh, from the this VS Code that we opened this black page, uh, we haven't gone any further. As you went, uh, I can't. Uh, I can't locate anything uh, like these codes over here. Uh, these codes are not provided in VS Code. These codes are. Uh, I have specifically written myself. Oh, okay. So and we, we would be uh, writing these codes as we go along. We would be writing these codes. Okay. Definitely. So if you want to try, just open a folder any folder just go over here open a folder from here and then create a file or else just wait as of now just wait in the next session we would definitely write and create a folder which would create html file and we would write from scratch what each html code means what each tag means how different elements what what are different components of an html uh, uh, this line of code for instance this is your opening tag. This is your closing tag. This is the content of the tag. And the entire thing is called an element. That is your heading element. What are different types of element? So we would be starting the structure, the uh, syntax and everything. So let me show you a roadmap that I created before going towards the JavaScript uh, full stack. Let me share the roadmap first. It would give you more clarity as we have very less time available today. Let's uh, let me show you the roadmap that I created for the front end part. Okay, let me open that. Yeah. So everyone able to see the roadmap? I'll zoom. I'll zoom in for us. So is my screen visible? Okay. Perfect. So I'll quickly. So this is the roadmap that I created last night to make sure that we all follow along what we have did. We have a complete track of the journey, what topics we would be covering and what order we would be covering the topics. And um, right now I've created the roadmap for the front end part. As we move along, I'll keep on adding topics as well. So let's see what all we have done and how coming forward, we would be covering topics as well. So we all have covered network and internet, web fundamentals, network types, internet, worldwide web, client server, packets and protocols. Then we have covered software development lifecycle in detail, different types of mobile applications, types of software, your system software, application software, and different stages of software development lifecycle. The next step comes is your front end. And the first part that we would be dealing is with HTML, CSS and the very basics we would be covering. What is HTML syntax? What is the way, correct way of writing it? Best practices, structures, tags, then hyperlinks, making lists, forms and tables, then CSS selectors and properties, 
different box model position properties as well. After that, we would be covering advanced CSS, very important topic. It helps you uh, make web pages that have lots of images and boxes and grids as well. So flex boxes are used, grids are used. Your CSS media queries are for responsive websites. Like if you're designing a website for mobile, tablet, and as well as desktop, your media queries come in. Then your transition and animations and different projects as well. So once we are done with HTML, CSS, and uh, advanced CSS, we can move to the front end part of the JavaScript. And meantime, what we would be doing is while we are covering this, we would cover some part of the JavaScript as well, and we would create a basic project. And then we would come to the CSS advanced part and cover the advanced JavaScript as well. So we would be covering like this particular section would be covered and we would be building a project. Then this section would be covered and a bigger project would uh, we would be building. So right now these topics might not look familiar at all, but just have a, a basic idea of the major headings that we would be covering modern JavaScript along with the basics of HTML and CSS. And then what, how JavaScript works under the hood. And then we would be moving to the advanced CSS and then advanced JavaScript. Post JavaScript, we would be coming to React JS, the library under JavaScript, which helps us write JavaScript very easily. The React is being divided into three major parts, your fundamentals, and then hooks, the modern way of writing React, and then React ecosystem as well, which has your Redux, then React router. Router is basically navigating through different pages. Then how we can style elements in React, your CSS in React, your bootstrap CSS in React, and so on. Post React, we would come to the version control system, your command line interface. What is Git? What is GitHub? Basic Git commands, how Git works. So, so far I've created this roadmap. I just created this last night to make sure we are familiar with the topics that we would be covering in upcoming time. And I assure you the curriculum is like very comprehensive and has been covered in full detail. So right now, today we downloaded the software from tomorrow. We would start writing code. We would start uh, exploring HTML. We would understand the syntax and structure, each line, each word. So everything would start from scratch. Don't worry, we would see how to open a file, how to create a file, how we can run it on the live server as well. Everything would be covered. So this is a basic roadmap for front end, which covers all the topics for your uh, those which we have covered and the, the ones which we would be covering. Your, JavaScript, React, and your version control. This version control is very important because when you would be working in the industry, you would not be working alone. There would be like 10, 20 developers working on a, on a single big project, and they all would be working from their systems. At that point of time, version control comes in. How they collaborate together, how they contribute together to a project, this version control will tell us. So very important topics we would be covering. We are not leaving anything. The curriculum is fully packed with so many examples, assignments, quizzes, and projects. Everything, every single thing would be covered using a project because the best way to learn coding is getting hands-on experience with projects, not just through the core concepts, but seeing the application of it. Where are we applying it? So any doubts so far, anything you want to ask regarding the curriculum. So right now, don't get uh, too much occupied with the front end and back end. Just focus on front end part. Once we're done with the front end, I would give you a detailed curriculum for back end as well. So any questions related to the curriculum part? If you think some topics need to be covered or you, ha you, want, ha you want to have some clarity about certain topics, Feel free to ask. I think uh, Ilham has a question. Go ahead, Ilham. Yes, please. Yeah, so I just have a question about the Chrome. Like, how did you uh, connect the Chrome to the, uh, what's the name of the application? To the, the VS Code? Yeah, VS Code. Like, so I'll just show you. 
So once you have the files written, once you have the code written, just uh -huh. right click over there uh -huh. and select open with live server because you have downloaded this extension. This option is available. Uh -huh. Okay. This is one way. The other way is uh -huh. uh, I'm already running. Just see if you see the sport number. This mm -hmm. shows that you're already running on the Google Chrome and so, it tells me if you want to close the server, I'll close it. But now I get this option, go live. You can okay. directly click this option as well. Okay. If I click go live, automatically my browser would open with the code written. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, if uh, no questions, then we can uh, wrap it up, wrap it up uh, five minutes earlier. Uh, yeah, uh, Han asked, do we have the bootstrap on the list? Yeah, yes, bootstrap we do have, be there. Yes. yes, we do have bootstrap. So I've mentioned it at the very bottom uh, with the React ecosystem. So uh, we, can over, we can also cover it uh, uh, in the advanced CSS section. We don't need Java, Mustafa. It's JavaScript, but we will come to that later on. So Java and JavaScript are totally uh, different two languages. We will be using JavaScript. It's easy to understand, um, not complicated as Java. Clues by Python. Yeah, JavaScript we will do later on. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, as we are starting, let me stop the recording first. So today we have downloaded the VS Code successfully. We have downloaded the extensions. The major extensions were your Prettier, which is the code for matter, your live server, which helps you run a local server on your uh, browser, and it helps you reload uh, automatically. You need not reload manually whenever you're making changes. The, we tweaked with the settings also to make our Prettier as the default for matter, to save our files automatically whenever we change the focus or leave the window. And we also saw we can download color themes, file icon themes, and some minor extensions like your auto rename tags or color highlighters also. So this was the topics that we covered. After that, we saw the particular uh, roadmap that we would be following. From uh, next lecture, we would uh, be diving into pure coding part. We would be starting the HTML syntax, the structure, the best practices, and how each line of HTML code is written on VS Code and how that can be displayed on your screens as well. Before wrapping up, let me show you a very nice example that how HTML, CSS and JavaScript uh, work while creating an application. So let me quickly share my screen for just uh, a moment. Yeah, so everyone able to view my screen, right? So a simple calculator application, everyone able to view, just give me a yes. Perfect. So now this calculator application has been developed using HTML, CSS, and your JavaScript over here, right? Now, what happens if I, if I just remove the CSS and just see how this calculator would look? This is just a bunch of numbers. Let me see. Yeah, just see a bunch of. Uh, boxes with numbers. The CSS was the one which was providing color and beautifying this particular application. The application is still working. If I write two plus two, it would be equal to four. If I write uh, plus three, it would be equal to seven. The application is still working. How the HTML has provided the structure and the logic has been written by JavaScript. And now if I comment this JavaScript part, and now if I try to uh, work on my application, it's just uh, loading. Okay. 
Desert. No. So let's see. So right now, what I want to show is this is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript club together. The CSS is providing the beautification of website, beautification of your application. If you remove CSS, the HTML looks like this. So HTML tells you what all you need on your application and uh, where it should be placed. So it should be placed like this in this order. Now the further enhancement and beautification of website is done with CSS and JavaScript is the logic behind it through like the addition operation, the uh, multiplication division, all these are operators that we would be studying in JavaScript. So right now we would be focusing on the HTML part that what all needs to be done, how many buttons, where they need to be placed and so on. So just understand the difference. HTML provides the structure. CSS provides color and beautifies that structure and JavaScript is the logic behind it. So with this basic understanding, we would be starting the HTML part tomorrow. So that's it from my side today. And from tomorrow, do log in with your, with your laptops only. It is mandatory. And the best practice is to code along. Whenever I'm writing some code, try to code along with me. And you would see that uh, very easily you're, you're getting, uh, you, you would be able to understand what's happening on VS code and how that particular code is incorporated on your web page. So any questions from your side, feel free to ask and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay, if uh, no question, questions, then we will wrap it up for the day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.